So it's not like you could do an x-ray or a blood test. There's really uh, no way of a confirmation of the diagnosis? Well, we've been looking for, obviously, a, a biological marker, a test of, of, of sorts for many years. Turns out right now we have an imaging modality referred to as a, a DAT scan. This actually is an indication of dopamine activity in the brain, and dopamine is the chemical that is deficient in, in patients with Parkinson's disease and responsible for some of those characteristic motor features that we talked about. And this DAT scan gives us an indication of what those levels are and if they're abnormally low. So that's relatively new. It's not necessary in most instances, but if there's a question of what kind of tremor the patient has or a question of the diagnosis, sometimes a DAT scan can be useful. Now, when you look at the results of the DAT scan, does the DAT scan tell you how far the condition has progressed? Can you kind of score me on a scale of 1 to 100 telling me how bad my condition is? We, we really can't do that right now. The DAT scan is not used as a, as a sequential measure of, of progression. So it's not really what we call a biomarker of Parkinson's progression. Uh, it tells us that there is or there is not a, a dopamine deficiency. It doesn't tell us anything about prognosis. It doesn't tell us anything yet about you know, year to year how a patient's going to do. Um, but it does indicate that there's an abnormality in, in dopamine. Where it potentially may be more useful is actually in patients who don't yet have symptoms, but who have a markedly abnormal scan, those patients may be considered at risk for developing clinical symptoms. So it may be very much more important in sort of the early preclinical detection of Parkinson's than it is as a differential diagnostic tool right now.